for issues pertaining to the county, he might give me a chance and listen. Thank you, Chair. I'm done. Mwashimua Hamid Babusa. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Joshua Kofa Jara. I think you've worked as the CS of this uh, county, the last regime. What do you think that uh, you've achieved during that period that makes you feel that you, so, you, 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 you are the best uh, to be given that uh, a health sector? Or, or maybe let me, can kindly let me uh, repeat that question. You've worked as the CS last regime. What achievement did you achieve then that you think you can improve on the health sector upon uh, uh, being uh, uh, given this chance? I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Honorable um, Babusa. Yes, I worked as a CS last regime. Um, a number of things maybe I can say that is an achievement, and some of it is uh, my own enrichment. Um, when uh, I came in to, to as, as, a, as a county secretary, what I could say is that uh, I um, streamlined and made uh, sure that we have something which resembles a working environment, something which rem resembles um, that uh, the rules um, uh, set out um, um, uh, department that set out uh, uh, processes which which people decided, uh, I mean, accepted to follow. That is basically organisation within the county. Uh, personally, personally, I gained a lot of uh, insight in terms of at that level then you are looking at the whole government, not just one unit. And for me, it enriched me uh, to, to realize or to know what is happening throughout the, uh, throughout the county in terms of uh, uh, county management. Um, we did, we tried to do uh, a staff audit, which was a very big issue uh, within the county. And I think that one is still in the pipeline uh, for, for a staff audit to be done. Because yes, you can have a big staffing, uh, but uh, uh, not very well placed within the units to do service delivery. So I would say yes, I left it with a working, uh, as a working uh, entity which can deliver. Thank you. Mr. Joshua Kofajara, the people of Tana River are watching. The people of this great country are demoralized with the department or with the health department. Me being among them. This question, I'm asking this question on behalf of the people. 
tell them why you deserve this, why you deserve uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this chance. Why? Can you give them a word of hope? A paragraph of hope, not a word. Give them hope. Thank you, Dr. Babusa. I have what it takes to make uh, processes work. When today I'm here, I'm saying, please give me a chance to deliver. In this decade, everybody, I believe, even within health, everybody applied, everybody uh, attended interviews to say, I want to be a medic, I want to be a supplies officer within that, that docket. So everybody has come, and the expectation is delivery. And in health is service delivery. Wherever I worked, I was known as a champion for performance improvement. Wherever I worked, and performance improvement not in one discipline, in multi disciplines that we have a task to deliver a certain product or a certain service, and we have a myriad of people who with different expertise, our goal is only one, our people to get service. And I'm determined whatever I have gained the other places, I'll bring to the Department of Health so that we deliver, we provide service to our people. That I can promise. Bona Joshua, availability of drugs in the county health facilities has been a challenge. Are you aware of that? What might be the cause of this? And how will you remedy the situation? I repeat. Availability of drugs in county health facilities has been a challenge. Are you aware of that? What is the cause of this? And how will you remedy the situation? <coughs> Honorable Babusa, you're right. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of the hue and cry for the time I've worked with the county about availability of drugs. Uh, why is it so? I think it could be more than one item, but I'll just uh, uh, talk about one. <clears throat> I read a report uh, while I was in that office that there was an independent uh, consultancy which went around the county When I was a CS, you know, I, I used to get uh, uh, to, to see documents uh, going through. And <clears throat> that consultancy said after going around all the facilities and all the outlets uh, of health within the county, they came with an approximate, uh, a, approximate uh, figure of, of a budget which should give drugs for a whole year. And that figure was 300 million shillings per year. The budget, and I think it's because also of scarcity of, of, of monies, the budget which we averagely normally put is about 95 million, which is less than a third of uh, what was done by this consultancy. So if we look at that and say we're going to deliver, you know, uh, uh, at a go, we have maybe drugs which will take us one third of the year for the whole county. Um, how to mitigate that? I would say I should work, if I am uh, uh, no, appointed in this position, I should work with the assembly very closely in terms of if we are looking for 300 million, how much can we actually uh, uh, apportion to drugs so that we have a little bit longer time 
uh, of drugs within the outlets. Uh, and that should alleviate a little bit the issue of drugs within the, uh, the medical facilities in the county. It's a little bit shortage of money, but I think it's something which the committee and the assembly, if they're made aware, we try to see how do we balance out what we have as a total uh, 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 amounts which we are getting to the county vis-a-vis -vis what we allocate to this, especially if we say that's a priority, and I think it is. Bona Joshua, according to me, if I'm given the nine departments to rank them, number one to nine, I'll give a rank health department the last, with many reasons, as at now. And the question goes, how will you rank? How do you rank the health department according to its recent performance? And how do you intend to improve service delivery in the health sector in general and the whole county referral hospital in particular? Uh, thank you, Honorable Abusa. It's true. Um, as a department where, interac where a department interacts with the, with the population, when there is a flow, it's very easy to be noticed. And health is one of them. And maybe there are one or two also uh, within that. <clears throat> I cannot say that we are there uh, um, ready in terms of uh, uh, benchmarking our service delivery that we are good. I don't think so. There is still a lot, maybe we, it's as if we're starting from scratch, a lot to be done to make sure that uh, we have services to our people. And uh, health cuts across. Uh, when we look at health, when we look at medicine, we're looking at curative, okay? The question is, how do we reduce the number of ailments vis-a-vis -vis the service which we are giving? How do we improve the number of staff in all the facilities, as uh, um, um, Mwishimiwa there had uh, already alluded? Because we have to say we have so many people in X ward. How many medical staff do we have there so that they attend to our people? And how much drugs also are we putting there? What I intend to do is the people or my people within the health department should be people who are selfless. That is, you put in what extra miles from what is uh, ex expected. Uh, the issues of uh, eight to five, those ones should be looked into because sickness can come any time. And in an outlet, you might have only two people uh, um, uh, actually seconded to those outlets. The question is, can they work 24 hours? It's something which you just work selfless to be able to provide that. So it's motivation. I would like to, to say that uh, we want to, I want to work as a team, with my team, and maybe also with other departments because uh, food provision also uh, comes in handy in terms of uh, cutting down the uh, ailments within the, uh, the population. And uh, if we work together as joint participants in, uh, in uh, health provision, I believe we, we should be able to, to, to improve, not to be number one, but to improve from where we are to what we should be. Other counties are doing it, why not Tana River? And that I promise we can do. And not as one individual, but as a team. If you'll allow me to ask this, uh, the last question in Kiswahili for for the interest of my people, my great people uh, of uh, Kinakombawad. If you'll allow me. Order, Honorable Babusa. I had indicated uh, in the morning uh, the standing orders are very clear. 
you could have started your uh, questions uh, by Swahili. So kindly conclude in English. Your constituents will understand. And those who don't know English, you will go back and translate to them what to ask. Chair, yeah, you've, already, you've already ruled and I respect that. But uh, I'll try my best and translate to them after this. Because it's very important. This. It's okay. Uh, Mona Joshua, Mr. Joshua, I think if I'm not wrong, I won't ask you how many words do we have in the county. We have 15 words, among them being the great Kenakomba word where I come from. Kenakomba word, according to me, it has never been benefited with anything since devolution. Health sector being uh, the backbone of any community. Without health, there will be no, you know, any kind of uh, uh, progress when it comes to life. Eh? Uh, we have, we have around uh, three dispensaries in Kinakumbawad which are four dispensaries, two are functional. Uh, we have Wenger dispensary, which is functional. We have Majengo dispensary, which is functional. And then we have Hara dispensary, which is a store. And we also have Kilindini dispensary, which the contractor has not been paid for the last 10 years. And the people from Kilindini, whenever they want medical services, they have to cross to Garissa County, that is Ijara, to go and seek for medication. How now my question is, how will you prioritize, prioritize Kinakumu word? And unless you answer this question, I won't vote for you. Honorable um, Badosa, I hear you. In terms of prioritizing, I say it. This should not be a domain of the CCM alone. I said it here. I have to work with the leadership, and the leadership is here in this house. If I have, there are 15 awards, eh? if I have a basket of 15x, whatever the x is, it's a matter of sitting and dialing and say, how do we use, utilize this? so that the most affected areas, we alleviate their pain. That is the best way to work. We cannot have uh, enough for everything, but what we have, we prioritize. Kinakomba people, Wayu people, uh, they're all Tanarian. And we say, if Kilindini has only two working dispensaries, we try to talk to the other uh, Waishimis and says, why don't we leave for this year? whichever way it is. Why don't we alleviate the pain of the people of Kinakomba? And I, I believe, I mean, with your uh, uh, convincing tongue, we can convince and say, hey, let's look at this area for this period, and then we look at the next area for another period. Um, I can't say it's unfortunate, but I know Kinakomba is quite broad. Uh, it's, a, it's a very big word. Um, in terms of priority, I would look and say, if it is two, how can we increase that maybe to three or the four to be working? That uh, I would be able to do. And we sit around, on a round table and we say, which one do we uh, tackle first? It's dialogue, this, that's the best thing. So that nobody feels they were deprived development. Now, by the way you're talking, basically you're saying, 
Kenakomba was deprived. It shouldn't be the case. It should be a case of we all understand why certain things have happened. So, uh, because I also want your vote, that is how I'm going to do it. Uh, thank you, Chair, and all the best, uh, Mr. Joshua Jara. Uh, thank you, Honorable Dusa. If uh, Mwishimua Kodobo, you will let us allow Mwishimua Mahmoud Baro uh, to ask questions so that he can attend to other uh, matters. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, by giving me the opportunity. Sorry, I was rushing somewhere. Uh, Mr. Joshua, uh, the question says, how do you intend to complete uh, an operationalized STAL project in health sector? I'm a still project in health center. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Barrow. Uh, if I understood you uh, right, is how do I intend to operationalize stilled projects within health? <coughs> Stored projects, a project always had a budget. Uh, the first thing uh, I would go around that uh, uh, problem is to find out a project which had a budget, why has it stalled? And if it has stalled because of reprioritizing to other areas, I'd go back because if we have put in uh, finances in a project, we cannot leave it to be a white elephant. According to me, once you start a project, if you don't finish it, that is sunk money. And uh, with the help of the assembly, it's a matter of do we say, let's look at not doing many more projects and we finish or uh, we, we uh, operationalize what has told. Once that is uh, understood and accepted, then I know we will not have a push and pull in terms of, oops, uh, still within my ward, I would like to have new something, but you have three stalled projects. Do we finish the three stalled while we leave the new for future? If that is agreeable, it is doable. It is doable, we can finish those projects, and we can look for staffing because that's another challenge, and we can look for equipping uh, those, uh, those areas. It's a challenge, but it's doable, and it can be done with agreements between the parties. And the biggest uh, individuals in terms of parties is the, 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 the uh, honorable members from the ward so that we agree what we're going to do uh, with these sole projects. Uh, that's the, the, the only way we're not shoving uh, projects down with your thoughts, no. Uh, thank you. Uh, the other question is, uh, we had ambulances across uh, the county before, uh, and uh, most of them are grounded now. One of them, even in Salawood, we don't have an ambulance now. Uh, the referral cases normally are taken to Malindi and uh, Garissa. Funny enough, this hospital is called uh, Hola Referral Hospital whereby the structures are not enough. How do you intend to improve the ambulance services and also the referral structures? Uh, thank you, Honorable Barrow. Um, in terms of uh, facilitation for transportation for our, our sick, which is ambulances, it's a matter of setting aside funds to say, can we rehabilitate 
some of those, uh, some of that equipment in, in the name of ambulances, or we can't. If we can't, slowly we build up again uh, uh, capacity to bring in. that facility. Um, referrals. Referrals, I think, will come in because either a complication which cannot be handled locally or a complication <coughs> which requires uh, specialistic uh, uh, expertise. And my uh, tenure within the office, in the office of CCM Health, will be to look at can we get that expertise, those expert, that expertise in terms of consultants who will handle most of the cases where we refer because the medical uh, in, uh, uh, experts we have today, they know in terms of history which are the complications which arise which we need to do referral. And the reason is if it is staffing, then we bring in staff who can handle that. If it is equipment, we bring in equipment to do that. If it is retraining, then we set aside time and, and, and funding to train our people to handle those referrals. I think those will be the major three areas where we will be forced to refer people to other facilities outside the county. And yes, I will look into that. Uh, final question. And uh, I summarize one. One, when you are CS, it's in a public domain that you have a character of a dictator sometimes. You don't listen. Uh, and you are only making decisions sometimes. This is in the public domain. But again, your background is not health and you are CCM health for now, proposed for. Uh, what value will you add to this sector? We need a consultative, talking to sometimes even sick people, psychologically affected people, professionals, uh, medics, and need involvement. How will you improve this situation? Having in mind that it's public domain, what I told you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't see myself as a dictator. Um, the people who feel that way, um, you're saying it's public domain. If when I was CS, my office was the most visited office. I had an open door policy. I saw everybody, I listened to everybody, and I tried to action uh, not through my office, most of the time it's other departments to make sure that these answers or solutions are provided. Uh, it's unfortunate if a few of us feel that I'm a dictator, maybe it's uh, uh, the way I communicate uh, to people. Um, two, you talked about um, uh, me not having a medical background. 
uh, one, even the national government, uh, this is now f for us, it's, it's also in, uh, public knowledge uh, that uh, CSEs and PSEs within the national government do not, might, might not have to come from the professions where they are actually running those departments. It is policy, it is management, it is administrative. If uh, you, uh, you ask me, <clears throat> everybody from director level within the department downwards has to be a professional. Now, if I have uh, around 300 or 400, and 400 uh, staff within the health department and only three of us are non-medics but we are managers and policy makers, the department will run out of consultation, out of meeting, when they come to those policy uh, levels, it's a matter of assisting to get facilitation, to get equipment done, for us to come and solicit for more funding from the assembly. The doctors might not be able to come here, but I will come with my team who might be top management uh, within that department. So, uh, I am not a dictator. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a final and uh, to say bye. My concern is Salawad, Madogo, Bangali, health centers or clinics are either dead or half dead. Some of them are used like, you know, rental houses. People live there. We have 10 years now down the line of revolution. Uh, we had expertise like him. Uh, who are to add value to this. When you go to El Rar, Kamguru, the clinics there, people are using like resident. In Darime, and the Mado, uh, I mean uh, Maramtu, it was constructed by Latif, I think, Latif long time ago. So it was be taken by the county government to equip it. Up to now, nothing. At the same time, Sala, Sala village is the same, dead. All this I'm narrating. Uh, my fear is, if somebody is not an expert in this field again, with the policy making, with the experience you have, I don't know, what change can you make in this situation? Thank you very much. God bless you. I wanted you to reframe that one into a question, but... Uh... If you are done, we can proceed to the next member. Was that a question or? Okay. You can respond? Thank you, uh, Honorable Baron. I'll tell you this. Uh, as I was coming for this uh, discussion, I'm, I want to call it a discussion, I told myself, how can I acquaint myself, familiarize myself with the more than 70 outlets, medical outlets in the county? And I told myself, if I am uh, given the opportunity to, to serve a CCM uh, health. The first things uh, first. One, to know my team. Two, to know my facilities. So I promise you I'll run throughout this county to see all the facilities. And if you are available in those areas, your areas, please, that time I'll make it known that I'm going around as the new CCM health. So that I see it with myself, I assess it myself, without being told uh, in the boardroom. 
Uh, I roll my sleeves. I, <laughs> I am a field person. I will go. From that point, then I will know what do I need to do to make those uh, facilities operational. I think that's the best thing. Thank you. Mashimo Akadabo, proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Honorable Mameni, you've been the county secretary for this county. And there's no, there's nothing that you are not aware in this county as far as departmental matters are concerned because you are the chair of the CIRAC committee. So this county is famously known for referrals. We've been referring our patients to Malindi, Mombasa, Kilifi, and even sometimes to Lamu and other parts of the other counties. So according to you, which areas should this county address in order to oversee, uh, reverse this trend of transferring patients to other counties? also make us look like we maybe either we don't have expertise or we don't know what we are doing. But I'm looking at that. I'm not saying that I'm an expert. I'll still need to learn more. But if I think outside the box is that uh, referral will come with maybe three things are not there. One, do we have the expertise to handle uh, those individual patients? That's one. Two, do we have the facility to handle that situation in terms of equipment uh, to handle that situation? The third one, I'll, I'll not think about it. And uh, as the chairman of Sihara at that time, I'll tell you this for a fact, that we tried, as Siharak uh, and as a department, as health, who put in requests in terms of to bring in consultants. Because sometimes uh, we might need consultants to handle certain situations. We are getting there. We now understand we have a surgeon who was out training. He has come back. We might have a gynae who might come back we don't have. But the biggest challenge, uh, Honorable Kodobo, is that when we have consultants who are working in places like Mombasa, like Malindi, like Nairobi, when they see our adverts and they are coming to Tana River, they don't apply. I'll tell you for a fact, they don't. And uh, I try to find out what that could be because my office, it was a frustration if I have four consultants I want to bring in and they don't come in or six consultants and I'm not getting, I try to find out why. And the reason I was given is that uh, if they come to Tana River, they will lose the bigger market as a consultant to attend to other people. Uh, as a consultant. They are allowed to do that in, 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 in bigger cities, that they can work in the government uh, institutions and also work in 
uh, private institutions. So together, we have to find out a way. At some point, I said, maybe the three or four counties can come together and say, why don't we bring in a consultant or two consultants for a particular uh, expertise and we share that consultant so that they have um, a bigger environment to work and practice what they know. So one of the things I will do is to try and engage my colleagues maybe in Lamo, in Garissa, in Kilifi. Can we work together and have a pool of consultants the way the, uh, uh, the flying doctors used to come and assist us those days? If we can get that, we'll be home and dry. And then we also say, what do we need to equip our, our referral hospital with? Uh, for instance, uh, we have a surgeon. Do we have surgical facilities or surgical, surgical tools? Uh, those are some of the things which we can, uh, we can look into and cut down the number of, uh, of referrals to these other uh, counties. Uh, it will be slow, but we, we should try. Together, we should try and get that. Uh, and then also bring in enough staffing. Staffing is also an issue. Uh, if you don't have enough staff, uh, then uh, you might not be able to handle too many uh, of these things. Uh, it's something which we can discuss, something which we can interrogate and say what is the best way to, uh, to go and cut down uh, those uh, frequencies. Thank you. I thank you, Bona Nomini. Uh, I will not call you a dictator, but the speculation has it that you've been a bully when you were in the office. So, you have been, I don't want to use that name of dictator, but you acted in a manner that those who are below you see you to be bully in that office. Uh, in that sense, you are now heading to a very crucial department. A department where every time when the staffs of these departments are aggrieved, they take to the streets. So, in that situation that you have been clarified as a, a person who doesn't listen to junior officers and sometimes we are told that your office you cannot be seen you have that habit of absenteeism how will you attend to emergency things in this uh, new department if you will get a nod from this uh, honorable house and in that line, are you aware that your two precedences, precedences, those who were before you, the first as a county government, the second county government, both of them were impeached. So, are you going with a question as a CEC who his two former colleagues were impeached? Or you will go with that uh, notion that you have headed a big office in this uh, county. I thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, through the chair, there are certain uh, uh, Things I'm not saying that Honorable uh, Kondobo is lying because maybe these are things which are reaching Honorable uh, Kondobo. One thing is, I've never been a bully. I am firm. I am firm, not a bully. Uh, two, absenteeism. Uh, that's why I was frowning. Uh, if there was, there is an officer in the last government, who you will see from eight to eight at night, it's me. So absenteeism, 
maybe you came a day when I was not well, maybe. I will not uh, 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 debate that. But uh, I'm always in the office and I see everybody and I listen to everybody. Three, I'm going in as a servant of the people. I'm going in as a servant of the people. No matter what offices I've held, I know I'm going in as a CC health, and health is a service provision area. Um, I will get the history of my other predecessors, eh? but I will not uh, look, you know, uh, behind my back uh, that maybe people are looking for me to impeach because I'll just be doing a job. I'll be doing a job and I'll try to do it as stipulated. Uh, so, Honorable Kodobo, be rest assured, uh, I intend to go there and really work. And you will always find me in the office. Thank you. Hello. Uh, you know, when responding to Mwishimua Kodobo's question, word bully. There is no other word. He could have called you a dictator. He could have called you Mr. Arrogant, the way members refer to you uh, in the previous interview. And I intervened on that day uh, when you were called Mr. Arrogant and uh, I had to intervene. But on this one, uh, he chose his words uh, uh, correctly. So it's upon you to defend yourself. It's upon you to respond to what members asked. So far, I haven't seen anything that uh, warrants my intervention uh, so that they can withdraw. So just respond calmly in a way that uh, it's possible, please. Mwishimu um, Kodoba, proceed. Thank you, Chair. Honorable uh, nominee. As the CEC, CCS for the county, uh, the county assembly has, on several occasions, directed the office to reinstate officers that were laid off in uh, unknown circumstances. Those, these, uh, the revenue collectors, the fourteen. Uh, health drivers, but you ignored the county assembly directives. Does that mean that you do not honor or respect the assembly? Or what, uh, what was it about that uh, you refused to follow the directives of the assembly? Uh, thank you, Honorable Kodobo. One, I'd say I did not refuse uh, to, uh, to do um, what I was directed. Uh, the challenge which was there, and I think we discussed in the, the, the special committee which I attended, I think once, uh, twice or thrice, is that I pointed out and said the office of the county secretary does not unilaterally appoint or uh, employ individuals. The office of the county secretary does not, um, what can I call it, sack staff within the county. The office of the county secretary is just the head of public service. So staff are employed by an entity and given to the office of the county secretary to deploy. And at that time, I remember very well, I said, it was not an initiative from that office. It was an initiative 
of an audit from an audit query through the Public Service Board. And the Public Service Board created a committee going around to try and see these departments, what are the issues in terms of employment. And the thing, they brought reports and directed county secretary, yes, lay of so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so, 28 of them. A county secretary, yes, these drivers were employed uh, illegally, lay them off. My job is when they employ, they also give minutes to the county secretary and say, hey, county secretary, please write letters of employment, and these are the terms. Even the terms are determined by the county public service board. What do I do, or what does a CS do? Takes those uh, uh, liaises with HR, HR will do the drafting, the letters will come there for signature. Because the office of the CS is just head of public service. Employment, sacking, is county public service board. But I think I was not understood and I'm repeating it here today again. There was no vendetta, nothing. It was a directive, which is the true position to debt. If that directive would have been given to the Public Service Board and they heeded the seat and say, we have a, direct a directive from the Assembly and we are directing you, County Secretary, reinstate so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, the CS has no other business. It's just to do what the Public Service Board has said. That is the process. So I did not disrespect, and I tried to, uh, to uh, discuss this issue, but I think I was misunderstood. But that is the process. And I promised, remember, I had promised that because of affirmative action, we have people who have worked in those positions for more than five years. I promised to say I'm going through the executive to say, those 28 positions which we were paying, we, are, we still have budgets for them. Even if they were uh, badly employed, let's now uh, create a process to legalize those positions and bring them in, if they qualify, according to the Public Service Board. And I think I just saw an advertisement, and the 28 are coming back, or the 28 are, have been advertised, and I think it was my and ever that time. In terms of drivers, they didn't have a budget for 14, they have done six, and I think I said during that discussion that I know six drivers will be advertised. If those Tanararians qualify for this, please, this is the opportunity, and maybe we solicit for an affirmative action. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I think uh, if we'll go beyond that, we might be arguing with the nominee, but uh, it is in public domain that uh, we called the the nominee when he was in the office of the County Public Service Board. Uh, the Siharak is the one that advises the departments. The needs arises from the department, and when the uh, needs arrive, arises, before it goes to the County Public Service Board, it must pass through the CRAC. That the county secretary is the chair of that committee. When we call the county secretary to interrogate on that matter of the, 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 the aggrieved drivers, they brought the petition here. We formed another committee, and the committee directed the County Public Service Board to reinstate them. We had the letter from the, CR, uh, the Harak that states that they are in need of those 14 drivers. Uh, the CC, uh, the CS, by the, then the CS, who is our nominee today, confirmed to us as the committee that he has advised the department that these people cannot be employ employed now. So if today the nominee is coming before the, uh, this Honorable House and the committee, uh, shifting blames to the county public service board, then that one will be a discussion on uh, 
of another day. But today, for today, uh, Honorable uh, nominee, you have good documents. You have a very vast experience in uh, uh, many fields, and you've worked in different uh, institutions and in different parts of this country. Uh, today, if this committee and the House maybe approves you, you are heading to a, a dead department. A department where today, even if your child qualifies to be a nurse or a doctor, will not think of working in Tana River. If you go to Hola Referral Hospital, just leave the services that is being rendered there. Go look at the premises. Go look at those offices. Look at the surrounding of that hospital. Look at where our nurses are working. Leave about the patients. We don't have even toilets. Go to the surgery uh, department. Go to the lab. Go to the theater. You will be surprised. And you've been pumping money in this department since the revolution started. It is very shameful for us as the county. Very shameful indeed for us to refer our patients to Garissa, to Malindi, to Mombasa. What is that we don't have here that others have? We are getting allocations from the county, uh, from the exchequer, the way they do. We have the experts here. We have people like you who come before this house and just stamp or tell us that they will do work. But after the vetting, when you resume office, you are acting like something is not happening in this county. So I just want to advise you, as a person who has held many offices, and a person who has the interest of Tenariva people at heart. Kindly, if you get nod from this office, burn the midnight oil and try to change the services of this county. If the sabotage is from the doctors and nurses that are here, sack them and re-employ new nurses and doctors. And let me tell you, it's not threatening or... Fund Health is very fundamental. We will not sit back and watch as the health, health department continues to de deteriorate as we are seeing now. So for those uh, few remarks and questions, uh, my former CS, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Honorable Musa. Sante sana mwenyekiti. Nami niko na swali moja pekee kwa nominee wetu Joshua Jara. Bwana Joshua Jara, nadhani unajua vile hali ya huduma ya afya vile na dorora katika hii kaunti yetu. Nadhani hakuna mtu atakwambia maana waswahili nasema mwenye macho ambi tazama hata kama hujaona lakini utasikia swali langu ni moja je leo ama tukupatie nafasi tukakupatia hii wizara uendeshe swali langu ni je kwa niaba wa wakazi wa Tana River nao pia wasikie utawahidi nini wakazi wa Tana River katika hii hali ya huduma ya afya Swali la kwanza katika hiyo swali je hii hali ya afya vile ilivyo 
itabaki hivyo vyo vile vilivyo ama utaba itakuwa kutakuwa na mabadiliko ama wakazi wa Tanariva watarajie hali ngumu zaidi ya hii yangu ni hayo Asante mheshimiwa Nikipatiwa nafasi hii Nikipatiwa nafasi hii Hii wizara ya afya ni lazima tupatiane huduma inayotufaa Nimesema ni lazima ni kwamba wale ambao tuko kwenye hiyo wizara ya afya kama mimi ni mfagiaji nitafagia because lazima tuone usafi utakuwa mzuri kama mimi ni mpiani huduma kama nas ni lazima ufanye kazi kama nas kama we ni daktari expectation itakuwa ni hiyo hiyo e, promise yangu ni kwamba hiyo wizara itabadilika kazi itafanyika na ikishindikana nitakuja kuna kamati hapa e, ya, ya, ya afya na katika hali ya kuzungumziana kuulizana ma, maoni bwana kodobo alisema hapa kwamba tukaenda kule si si uh, threat lakini ni lazima mtu ajukumike ajitume wizara ya afya mfanyikazi wote wa afya ni lazima ajitume ikifika saa kumna moja, wataka kufunga ofisi uende na kuna mgonjwa e, nafikiri bwana kodomo vile alivyosema lazima tuangalie ilo jambo katika e, 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 mwelekeo huo mheshimiwa na kupromise kwamba ile uh, department itageuka asante mheshimiwa riziki mr chair mr jar afternoon i have got only one question to ask you and it says under what circumstances is abortion permitted in Kenya? Thank you very much, um, Honorable Riziki. Um, as it was said here, uh, I'm not a medic, but uh, legal issues are legal issues. Uh, which everybody should be able to understand. I think the basic uh, situation of abortion uh, being uh, uh, acceptable is when that pregnancy, okay, um, is uh, is uh, uh, the pregnancy will affect the life of the mother who is carrying that pregnancy. That abortion. Uh, should be uh, acceptable. That is the one I know uh, and nothing else uh, for now. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Honorable Riziki. Uh, Honorable Paul Mara, do you have anything? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick one. Uh, uh, Mr. Jara, I just uh, want to know whether either you or a member of your family have been attended or admitted in Hola District Referral Hospital. If yes, how was the service? And if no, why? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Maro. Um, one, I myself, I myself have been attended to uh, at the Hola Referral Hospital. I went with a dental case. If you notice, I don't have a tooth. 
and this was extracted at the dental uh, facility. Uh, I was shocked. I didn't think that we have new equipment and when I walked in there, I think it was about two years ago, um, the equipment was super and the staff at the dental facility, um, they, they, were, they were good. Um, another situation was uh, uh, for a, a child who was a member of my family. Um, the child had a condition, I, can't, I don't know what condition it was, and uh, we told the mother who had visited, I think they came for uh, some funeral, to not to go anywhere else, just to go to uh, the whole referral. And that child was attended to, uh, to the satisfaction of the parents. I was not there myself. But for this one, which I was attended to, I don't know whether it's because uh, this was the CS who is coming to be attended, but it, it was okay. I know uh, that uh, a service is a service. It's not the infrastructure. It's the individual and the facility which is within uh, the, 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 that facility. Um, and if one who is uh, providing that service really wants to do a good job, they can. The thing will be attitude. What attitude do our people, the service providers, have towards giving service to the common Mwanainchi. I think that's, that could be the problem. And uh, that's something which uh, I intend to work on, that we change our attitude. We, 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 we go beyond the expectation of, of uh, the individuals who are going for service there. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, one last one, one last question. Yeah? Um, I think the genesis of uh, most of the diseases, communicable diseases, are rightful, generated from these referral hospitals. The reason it is the dirtiness in that hospital. And most of the public of health officers are just within there. What will be your intervention to improve the cleanness in the whole district referral hospital? Thank you, Honorable Maro. It is true. Um, you might walk in into a health facility and come out more sick than when you went in. You went in with a fever, you come out with a big infection, it is true. And uh, uh, mostly it will be the cleanliness and sanitation uh, of, of that facility. Now, uh, the little I have heard um, as uh, uh, Honorable Musa has uh, talked is if you have not seen, but you can hear. And the little I've had is that the services of cleanliness within the Hola Referral Hospital has been contracted. Now, I also hear, and uh, to some extent, yes, maybe the contractor will react that, that way, even if it is you, is that sometimes the contractor goes for a number of months without payment. Now, the moment that happens, there is a lull in terms of a go slow in terms of the work, uh, we, we, uh, cleaning work within that facility. The way to go about that yeah, would be maybe two, two ways. One, can we have our own people to do that? Maybe yes, maybe no. The other one is, can I, as a CC Health, work closely with the finance department so that payments to these people who are facilitating uh, those services do not delay so that we don't have a go slow. And the expectation of the uh, uh, cleanliness uh, of those facilities to be as high as we expect. I always discuss and say most of these hospitals, even in other uh, counties, even in private hospitals, they are not new facilities. But when you go there, they are sparkling clean. And that is all what we want. So, um, yes, 
it's a matter of looking at the service being provided by the service providers and if there is any hitch in terms of payment then I work closely uh, with the Department of, uh, of Finance or Treasury so that the payments come in time so that these people do not get demoralized. That is um, what, 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 what I could say. Mr. Chair, although I said uh, it was the last question, but I've recalled a very uh, sensitive question here. Uh, Mr. Jara, what will you do to ensure staff quarters, especially at Hola Referral Hospital, accommodate the technical staff who can help in cases of emergencies because at, as it is now, we have several non-technical staff, some even not working in the medical department, staying in the hospital houses. I cannot extend to say that you are one of them also, but uh, uh, sincerely you are one of them staying in those uh, uh, staff quarters houses. And we have some emergencies cases which normally occurs during night hours, late hours. What will you do? What will be your intervention to make sure that uh, those doctors, maybe, uh, and the very important technical staffs remain within the premises, the hospital premises? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Maro. Um, that question, um, I will give you two challenges, which uh, uh, in the last recent days um, I was. Uh, uh, requested to give some information. One, all, uh, all assets which were for the national government for a devolved function, those uh, assets are supposed to have been transferred to the county government. Unfortunately, the staff quarters within the hospital, and maybe most of the staff quarters of devolved functions within the county have not been transferred to the county government. So the county government does not have control of that. While medical services and the hospital is devolved. Now, first things first. One is my colleagues who are responsible uh, to take over uh, these facilities to go very fast to own them so that they can manage them. Managing them is what? It's not only to repair them or whatever, it's also to allocate them. If you don't have possession of an asset, you cannot allocate it because it's still not yours. So that's, that's, that's one thing. Two, it's for the medical or the health department to do an audit together with the uh, other departments which manage uh, currently the, uh, those housing facilities. Who is occupying what and where do they work. Then from there, we try to see how do we actually now take them in as assets for the county and then reallocate them. I hope I've answered you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we end up, Honorable Babusa, do you have anything? Uh, I think kabla um, sijakosea ningeomba kutumia lugha ya Kiswahili na pia ni uh, saa hizi nadhani tumefikia kikomo cha hii muda halo wa kuhoji mawaziri wote ule Bwana Chair uh, Tana River County kama venye tunavyojua na venye jamii ambayo inaisha Tana River inavyojua ni kuwa kiongozi aliyechaguliwa ni yeye ambaye anachangia matatizo kwa mwananchi kiongozi ambayo anafanywa interview akiwa waziri akiwemo chief officer pia na wao wanachangia matatizo ya Tana River County. Lakini kwanza 
ningependa kuambia kongole kwa wale waz, uh, mawaziri waliokuja mbele yetu na kupitia huu mchakato wa interview pia vile vile kuwapatia onyo bwana chair ya kuwa hii assembly ya tatu sisi tumeamua kufanya kazi kwa ajili ya ya watu wetu mara hii huu muda wa hii serikali ya mheshimiwa his excellency the third major kodana dr daktari haitakuwa rais kila mtu afanye kazi yake kama wewe ni waziri fanya kazi yako kama wewe ni chief officer fanya kazi yako paka yule mfajiaji wa ofisi wafanye kazi zao sababu tutatembea ofisi hadi ofisi wizara hadi wizara bila kuchagua wala kupagua wala kubagua sababu ya watu wetu tunataka mstaiki gavana aache historia sababu huu ndo mula wake wa pili na yeye ataacha historia historia iwapo sisi kama MCAs tutasimama na kufanya kazi kwa hiyo mimi ningesema kongole kwa wale mawaziri na ambaye atabatikiwa kupitishwa kwa hii uh, huu mchakato wote basi tunamtakia kila laheri lakini di uh, mara hii mambo hayatakuwa kama venye wananchi wa Tana River wamezoea kuyaona sababu sisi tunajua kwa wananchi wanapitia shida nyingi sana lakini mara hii mimi kama uh, naibu wa kiranja wa wengi katika hili bunge la tatu tumeshikana na members hapa tuko nao ambao wameserve mia, miaka mi, atams tatu wengine terms ine tano na tunasema ya kuwa tutafanya kazi pamoja kwa ajili ya mwananchi wa Tana River bila kuogopa yoyote bila kubagua kabila bila kubagu, kubagua dini ama njia yote ile ya ubaguzi sababu ya mwananchi wetu kwa hiyo bwana Joshua Jara wewe na wenzako namtakia kila laheri kwa niaba ya hii uh, hii nyumba tukufu shukrani Thank you Honorable Mabusa. Uh, that was quite a uh, good closing remarks. Before we wind up, before I give uh, an abubile, uh, I have a question for you Mr. Jara. Uh, are you listening? Uh, in reference to Mwishimua Kodobo's question regarding the drivers, eh? you said uh, you acted on the advice of the county service board if I'm, if I'm not wrong and uh, one of the functions uh, is that the county service board may delegate its functions in writing to you as the county secretary now in this case did they do uh, that advice or you are saying you are the one who signed the dismissal letters or uh, whatever the case uh, it might have been that uh, did they do that in writing the county service board uh, thank you chair um, there is delegated authority which is uh, generic from the our public service board and the uh, the uh, county secretary has been given delegated authority as a member of siharak chairing siharak although that delegated authority does not give him powers to employ or to sack so administrative delegated authority yes the authority of deploying staff 
which normally would still be done by public service board has been delegated to the county uh, sorry the county secretary so if i'm given 24 individuals and uh, i'll give a good example we we we, we actually brought in 20 to draft those letters for the signature of the county secretary so it is um, what can I call it it is um, a controlled uh, delegation rather than the full de delegation thank you did you respond to my question really I'm asking the board the county service board did they really get uh, that role to you in writing you know those drivers were sacked eh? and then there is uh, uh, others workers who are also unfairly dismissed the 19 eh? uh, during your initial interview the previous interview you were also asked that question eh? there was a letter that came from the Public Service Commission uh, directing the service board even the executive to reinstate those workers and I don't know whether you are in receipt of that uh, letter from the Public Service Commission. Now, the two, the 19 and the drivers uh, uh, who Moishima was referring to, did the service board uh, do that in writing for you to offer or uh, uh, issue them with the sucking letters? And did you also receive the letter from the Public Service Commission reinstating uh, 19 workers who are unfairly dismissed uh, by the board or even the executive. Thank you. Uh, the uh, exited uh, uh, staff were 28 and the, f the 14 drivers, 28 revenue uh, uh, clerks. Uh, the 19 I was not involved if there is any 19. Uh, in terms of expressly writing to uh, the county secretary, the answer is yes. And there are two levels. One, every time the public service board sits in a meeting or in meetings to deliberate on what is happening to these staff who are there after their findings and reports, they will actually take those minutes and a letter written to the county secretary that please, those, that, those, that is the decision on a meeting of X day uh, of, and a Y month, please execute as uh, passed by the, by the, by the board. Uh, whether uh, the county secretary has authority to execute what the public service board is directing them to do, directing him to do or her, that there is a generic a, a delegated authority document held within the Public Service Board and our executive to say so-and-so is allowed to communicate or to do uh, entry letters and exit letters. So when you're directed, you're acting as per the delegated authority which is there. But they actually write to the, to, to the CS. Thank you. Uh, Moshimura Yusuf, kindly be brief. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, mine is just to second my brother, Honorable DML. Ile kitu nataka kusema ni kwamba waziri karibu. Do, bado. Ile kitu nataka kusema ni kwamba we have been vetting you since yesterday. Na safari hii uh, hii bunge la kaunti la tatu hatu takubali mawaziri chief officers kuzembea kazi uh, kama vile DML alikuwa amesema hapa tutakuwa tunaingia ofisi baada ingine na jambo yenye iko hapa ni kwamba 
mtu asijidanganye akasema kwamba yeye ameletwa na governor ameletwa na nini kama mtu hatafanya kazi then he will use the door na hiyo sisi kama county la Tana River county ya Sibele Tana River hatutakubali tunataka kuambia ya kwamba if you will be approved sikwambia kwamba umekuwa approved na siwezi kuvunja morali ya kwamba hautakuwa approved if you will be approved tunataka health sector i change we want changes hakuna vile utaka kwa hiyo ofisi ukule AC na hiyo ofisi na, na hospitali inanuka cha ajabu ni kwamba sasa hizi tuko kwa msimu ya, ya, ya mvua juzi hospitali yote inanyesha hata patients wanakosa mahali pa kulala hiyo ni aibu so we want to get rid of all the stuffs ya kwamba kila mtu awajibike na afanye kazi yake asanteni sana Yeah, thank you chair. Eh, Bonajara, I also thought I should give uh, some kind of parting shot or advice. You know, when members are saying when members talk about this illusionment about the health sector, it is actually true. And uh, when members tell you, are wondering whether you can make it, members are worried whether you can make it in this health sector. Members are worried that it may land you into even greater problems. But you are saying you are ready to face the bull by the horns, eh? That's what you are saying. So I was, you also talked about prioritizing, hmm? and that is what should be done in all sectors. So the health sector, look at the stalled, look at the hospitals, somebody was calling them dead, dead hospitals. I was looking at Ngao Hospital, which is supposed to, which is a referral, has been a referral hospital, but now it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's like an elephant uh, project. It's lying there as an elephant project. These uh, hospitals, the old hospitals that were supposed to be strengthened are being left to, I don't know, let me use the same word, to die. And then other hospitals are started, they are not finished. Ngao Hospital, I'm very bitter about Ngao Hospital. There was an X-ray machine. The, the X-ray building was burnt through electric, uh, an, an electric fire. And uh, during the previous years, my money for projects, I put it there and it was repaired, rehabilitated, this building. So as to, so that this X-ray can serve. People have to move. Hmm? Even a, a small injury, you have to move to Malindi or come to Hola. It's even more cumbersome coming to, to Hola. That X-ray, if it cannot be maintained, why couldn't they at least make an order for another one? Because it is something that is it's needed. Look at the mortuary, the issue of the mortuary, which is the priority. I hear there was one being uh, built at Garsen. I don't know whether it's Garsen or Minijila. When the hospital is at, at Ngao, why? When, and then one was uh, done here at Hola. It's cumbersome, taking uh, dead bodies from Ngao to, to Hola, 
you would find people would prefer to take them to to Malindi why these discrepancies why hmm? look at the drug issue Mr. Jara, you will need divine intervention. This Department of Health will need divine intervention. Drugs. Which government hospital will you go to and get even a Panadol? Panadol. Tell us which miracle you are going to use to turn around this situation especially on drugs. There is no hospital. Hmm? When people are sick, they are running to the, to the MCS. When people are dead, it's you to Changa for people to take the dead to, to Malindi. That's, that is the docket you want to inherit. And uh, according to Kiswahili, Waswahili say, although I'm not supposed to mix ukiavalia, nguo, yaoge. Ukiavulia. <laughs> ukiavulia nguo, yaoge. Eh. Now, umesema unataka kuyavulia nguo. Na hiyo docket, I'm telling you, it only needs divine intervention. Kama, if you have your priorities right, then it is to look at these health facilities that were there first. Everything in this county is upside down. Look at the, 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 the minor irrigation schemes. Minor, other minor irrigation schemes are coming up. When the old ones were there, it was just a matter of Mr. Jara, I'm telling you, there is, you really need divine intervention in order for you to, to succeed. Otherwise, I want to wish you all the best. Uh, thank you, uh, the Deputy Speaker. All these remarks will be made, maybe, if you get the chance to be approved. And... Uh, during your swearing in, the leadership of this house might uh, attend that uh, function. That's when uh, the right place to make these remarks will be in that podium or in that forum, when the appointing authorities will also be present. But at this uh, stage, you place hard so that you get uh, the approval of the committee and that of the whole house. Uh, I don't know whether you have anything to tell this committee or what's your parting shot? Thank you, Mr. Chairman um, and the members present today. One, I am very grateful. I'm not taking this for granted that uh, I, as a nominee, uh, you have created time to be with me, not um, a small meeting, but quite some time, spent your time to be with me and discussion in this. I'm not taking it for granted. Two, um, is that um, uh, as Madam uh, Deputy Speaker has said, it is true whoever, uh, if I uh, get the opportunity to be approved as the CCM Finance, um, Divine intervention is true, and prayers from everybody and assistance from all the leadership uh, within the county would be required. It's not, I'm not taking this like a, um, uh, a situation where it is an easy task. I am aware it's a difficult task, uh, but as I said earlier, uh, it's true I will be mingling and trying to get uh, assistance as much as I can from uh, whoever will be able to, 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 to provide that. And um, within the discussion, I would also say, um, yes, I've been there as a CS for the last uh, uh, government. And uh, when you try to deliver the way you normally deliver, sometimes you step on people's toes. 
uh, I don't know whether it will be prudent to say I'm sorry, but uh, what I'm saying, it is not intentional or it was not intentional. And uh, because we are talking from our hearts and we love our county, I would say whoever I have wronged, either by statement or by inaction, I would say I'm sorry. And uh, forgiveness, I think, uh, it will be in order for that. Um, for our brothers and sisters, who tomorrow might be, I think, might be or will be, uh, might be, uh, be Eid, uh, I would say I also wish you all the best. Uh, you have taken one month of praying. I believe you're not praying for yourselves. You're praying for the county. You're praying for the country and the world at large. And if it becomes Eid, I wish you all the best in that Eid. Invited, I will come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jara. You can confirm your documents before you leave. Uh, we've come uh, to the end of uh, uh, this uh, uh, interview session. And uh, I will take this opportunity uh, to thank, first of all, members of the public who have been here with us since yesterday. Uh, to listen to uh, the work of uh, this committee and to also get to know on the kind of nominees who, are, uh, who have uh, so far appeared before the appointment committee. I thank you so much for that. I will also uh, thank uh, the members of the fourth estate on behalf of the committee uh, thank you so much uh, for having uh, made it to this assembly since yesterday. We've been together since uh, yesterday morning uh, up to this time. I uh, would also like to take this opportunity to thank the civil society organization, uh, their representatives uh, who have been here with us since yesterday. Thank you so much and uh, uh, we, we really appreciate that. Uh, my other appreciation goes to the secretariat, led by the clerk, who has gone out to attend to other matters, uh, our legal officer, uh, the clerk assistants, uh, the researcher. Thank you so much. And uh, I think the Hansard uh, team also as well. Thank you. Uh, to honorable members, uh, I will also take this opportunity to thank you most sincerely for the way you conducted yourself since yesterday. You did a lot of work. Uh, you've shown the world and uh, the people of Tana River uh, the kind of uh, honorable members who are representing them in this house. I thank you so much. Let us continue this way. And as uh, we go for uh, Eid and then uh, retreat to uh, prepare the report, I will, I will urge you to continue with the same spirit so that if possible, uh, by next week, we table our report uh, for adoption by the House. I thank you all. Thank you.
Asante sana. Uh, uh, tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa tumefika tamati ya mahojiano ya kujaribu kutafuta mawaziri ya kaunti ya Tana River. Uh, tunataka kuambia wa Kenya uh, wa Tana River na wa Kenya kwa ujumla kwamba uh, kutoka tuchaguliwe mpaka saa hii hatujapata mawaziri lakini wale ambao tumewa hoji wale ambao tumewahoji tumewahoji kwa hii siku mbili na tumeona kwamba hatuwezi sema tutawapitisha ama tutawangusha lakini ninaona kwamba tutakufikia wiki ijao tutakuwa na ripoti yetu ambayo tutaleta bungeni uh, kwa saa hii nataka tu niwaambie Tana River wakue na imani kwamba county assembly ya Tana River mara hii tutawafanyia kazi na wale uh, mawaziri ambao tumewahoji tuliwaambia kuwa mara hii ni kazi na kazi lazima ifanyike kwa hivyo yetu ni hayo na pia tunashukuru wale wote ambao walikuwa wanatufuatilia katika mtandao na pia kutupatia maoni yao ili tuwazungumzie kwani hiyo ndio kazi yetu ambayo wao wametuchagua kwa hayo mengi ni machache na sema asante Oh. Asante sana. Uh, kwa majina naitwa Hamid Babusa Salim. Mimi ni kiongozi mteule uh, wa mteuliwa wa Kinakombo Ward. Na mimi pia mimi ndio naibu wa kiongozi wa wengi katika bunge hili tukufu la Tana River County na kwa kweli leo tumefikia kilele cha huu mchakato wote wa kuwapiga msasa hawa mawaziri ambao wameletwa na mustahiki uh, gavana wetu na nia na madhumuni ni kutafuta uh, mawaziri katika wizara zote tisa ili Tana River iende mbele na mimi kama venye uh, mheshimiwa Kodobo amesema hapa sisi mara hii tumeamua kufanyia kazi watu wetu sababu kusema kweli uh, kaunti yetu bado wananchi paka sasa hawajapata ile furaha ya ugatuzi na tumeona kuwa haya matatizo yote yana yanatokana na uzembeaji katika kazi za ima waziri ima chief officer ama yeyote yule ambaye anafanya kazi kwa hizo ofisi za umma na mara hii tunaambia wananchi kuwa tuko kidete hatuko hatuko tayari rasilimali za Tana River zipotee ama hatuko tayari mwananchi wa kawaida wa wa hii county uh, tukufu aendelee kulalamika ama asiwe na imani na, wa, na viongozi ambao wametupi, ambao wamewapigia kura. Kwa hiyo mimi message yangu kwa wananchi wa Tana River nawaambia kuwa mara hii hii team ya the third assembly sisi tumeshikana kwa nia ya kuleta manufaa kwa huyu mwananchi ambaye ametupigia kura. Na pia vile vile tunataka kumshika mkono huyu mstahiki meja godhana ili aache ile kwa kizungu tunasema legacy aache historia njema ya kuwa wakati akiwa gavana bunge la tatu mambo yalikuwa tofauti uh, hawa mawaziri ambao tumewapitisha leo tumetumewafanyia interviews leo tunawatakia kila laheri lakini haimaanishi kuwa watapita na wala sitasema kuwa watapita sababu bado kuna process ya report writing tuangalie zile zile comments za waheshimiwa na pia tuone nani atapita nani atabaki ama watapita wote ama watanguko wote yategemea na huo wakati wa uh, uh, report writing lakini pia tunawatakia kila laheri
kumi na moja wamekuwa katika 